to the narrowboat that James built. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. Well, I'm just trying to tie up the front here rather precariously um, because I'd like to get the red oxide on the front doors, uh, the hatch doors, and the front two parts of the uh, of the roof. So, but I said it's a bit tricky. Paul's dinghy's being used at the moment, otherwise I'd probably use that. But it's not much to do. I don't think I've ever hoovered in a uh, more precarious position before. Right, I'm ready to paint and I'm going to paint this top side first and then I've got to do the side and then the gunnels, the front. I'm going to do the roof. I'm not going to do this panel here. I'm just going to do this top one here. Again, I'll show a couple of people have asked about those upward only strokes you do on on the finish. The reason for it is because the you don't sand any of these um, primer layers. So the red oxide or the two coats of primer, you don't sand in between them. Um, so the idea is if you if you do upward only strokes on each one, then the coats of paint kind of gel better together and therefore it gives a better finish and obviously on the on the top coats exactly the same applies but obviously the difference there is that the quality of the actual finish I don't know if you can make out from this but it's all bubbled um, and the difference it makes when you then do the strokes upward and you do it very very lightly you barely touch I mean there's hardly anything that's come off that and it's just blending the paint together and the difference it makes is huge. There we go. It's hardly anything on there. So you're not taking any any paint off. You just want to do it in workable areas. 
depending on the conditions, this paint varies in its going off. And so if you did a whole area, by the time you went back to do the upward strokes here, it'd, be, it'd have been going off. So just work in small areas. The next few coats you put on here will go in exactly the same way and it'll just start to build up the layers. And then yeah, sand down in between the last layer of primer before the top coats go on. That's when I sand it back a bit. Again, just using wet and dry paper. and do this area. So if I could do it like that. Uh, I should start round there. I'll do this bit last because I can lean on this. So that's last. That bit needs to probably be first. No, that bit first. Then that bit. Okay. Can't even remember what I said now. So let's get that out of the way. What do I say that bit first? Oh, bloody paper. Oh, I'm 
Okay. Right. Can't touch that. Can't touch that. Can't rest on there. Okay. Next bit. I'll touch that. Do I need that? Let's hope not. Uh, now what? That bit, that bit, under there. Yes, this might work. Oh, good, I think I'm home and dry. Dry being the operative word. Actual wind gun, I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Front bit there. Can be done. Or well, rather annoyingly, it started to rain. Um, the I think the red oxide had pretty much dried beforehand, but this isn't helping at all. But I'm just up against it time-wise, because for the bank holiday weekend, I really want to be chucking the top coat on. So I've got kind of between now and Sunday to get 
one or two coats of um, the undercoat on um, and I'm back in London tomorrow so uh, for, a, for a day and a bit so yeah I've just got to kind of do it as I can um, and this evening was a good time to put the red oxide on but oh, we'll have to see what, what the uh, condition of it is like tomorrow after a bit of rain but um it's time for my dinner so i'm going to make a ham and cheese toasty obviously if it's not spag bol it's got to be one or the other uh, someone did mention actually i should get uh, get out those recipe books which i do need to but at the moment i'm just so kind of busy painting and stuff i'm just it's kind of quite far from my mind um but toasty tonight so the fire it's, this is a this is quite a small stove this one um and they're quite popular on narrow boats, these little hamlets, these 2.5s, 4.5s. Um, but the ash pan's really small in there, um, which means if you were to set, if I was to light the fire using um, newspaper or paper or cardboard, it creates a huge amount of ash for what it actually is. Um, and the idea of what I'm trying to do with the, with the stove is to let it run at kind of lowest cost possible. So I don't want to be buying kindling, I don't want to be buying logs, and I don't want to be buying natural fire lighters. But at the same time, I don't want to be starting the fire each time with loads of newspaper or cardboard because it just chokes it up and it's crap stuff anyway. Um, and the ash pan, as I said, is really quite small. So um, I use kindling. Um, and obviously you can't really start fires with kindling. Um, you need something else underneath it. But if you go through it thin enough, you can. Um, and I'll show you how I do it. And it's just It just means the fire gets up to a heat really quite quickly without using any any of the other stuff, like let's say paper or cardboard. Obviously this kindling's kind of really quite small now, so it's okay. I've just got a log down here, I've got my hatchet, and so I don't smack my own and lose a thumb. I just rest it on there, tap it down a couple of times, and it goes through. And what I'm looking to do is to get some really kind of thin splinters Kind of wafer thin bits of like that one that's a good one and just keep going around it you can keep kind of cutting this thing in half all day long these little bits are quite good something like that yeah that'll work so the rest of these I can snap up now but these really kind of wafer thin ones that's what I'm gonna light the fire with So what I do is put the base of these little ones down here. In a bit of a crisscross position. And then I put those really thin ones on top. Again, in a bit of a crisscross. I take out the really thin one I want. Where's that? Uh, yeah, that'll go in there. And then, like this piece, and just wait for it to properly catch because obviously there's not much oxygen in there at the minute and then use it to light that one And as soon as you hear it start crackling, you know you're in business. It's really therapeutic.
let the fire do the work, let it build for a bit and then go in with some more kindling. And then just build it up in like a crisscross. And then I can start preparing the ingredients for my toasty. This is sounding like it's done. It's certainly not the most healthiest of meals. Oh yes. Right, round two. done for the night. As I said I'm back in London tomorrow and Thursday so I'm back here for, on Friday for the bank holiday weekend so uh, hopefully lots more still to crack on with the boat but until then hope you guys are all very well look after yourselves bye bye.